So let's continue on with part three of our cost metrics. So here we're going to start by looking at the cost variance, which as you can see is the difference between a task or a work breakdown structure at that point in time, components estimated cost and its actual cost or versus its actual cost. So the cost variance, okay, um, the earned value, so if you remember those numbers that we have, and we'll, we'll have an update here in just a second of all these numbers, we had an earned value of 6,000 and our actual cost was 8,000. So those are the numbers that we're going to use. Now remember, this isn't for the whole project, this is for a point in time, okay? And if you remember, we're through project, uh, through task three of our five projects. So by doing this, we come up with a negative, and if we go back, we know, whoops, if we go back, next, there we go. We know that a negative means we're over budget. And really, don't let this confuse you too much because it makes sense. You know, here's what we expected. This was the earned value. This is the actual cost. We are simply over budget. Okay. Now, the better way to look at this is to get a percentage or a ratio. So if we take 6,000, this is our cost performance index. If we take 6,000 divided by 8,000, we see that we're at 0.75. And as it states, for every $1 we've spent, we're only getting 75 cents of the work we budgeted has really been completed. Okay. So consequently, what that means is that for every dollar, you know, we're, we're spending 25 cents that isn't going towards the work completed. Now, I want to caution you on these next two uh, metrics. So the schedule metrics and the schedule performance index. And the reason for this is because what we're measuring here is time. And we're using money to, men to, to reference time or, or to, you know, to assess time, right? So be careful of these, although they're valuable. So let's look at this. The schedule mention, schedule variance is the difference between the current progress of the project and its original or planned schedule, okay? So again, the EV minus the planned value. If we come up with a negative, we're behind schedule. A positive, we're ahead of schedule. And a value of zero means we're right on schedule. <laughs> and then of course, we're gonna get an index of that that we can use to assess, use that index, take that index through the rest of the project if we continue on that trajectory and see where we're at. So the scheduled variance, now again, here's the problem with scheduled variance, is earned value is 6,000, planned value is 10,000, okay? And we're 4,000 under. The problem with this, is we can actually run over in time in our project. We could be six months late and end up at the end of the project finding means of saving money or finding that we don't have uh, as much cost as we associated with tasks uh, four and five and thus come out equal even though we're six months behind schedule, okay? So hopefully that makes sense to you. If not, please ask me about that. So we do, uh, Sorry, let me go back. So we do the calculations. We see we're 4,000. Negative value tells us the project is behind schedule and we know that it is. Now, as we calculate the index, we again just take the same two numbers, dividing them, we get 0 0.60. So this time out for every dollar of work that was expected to be completed, only 60 cents was act actually accomplished. So for every dollar spent, we're spending 40 cents that is not providing, you know, true value to the project. So here again is the summary of the metrics that we've talked about. So the planned value, right? So we know that for each task, we're estimating that the planned value is gonna be 2000. The actual cost for the first one, if, if we do this for each one, the actual cost for the first one is 2000, the earned value is 2000, so we're right on. There's no cost variance to this, okay? There's no schedule variance. We get the one and the one, which tells us at this point, we were good with cost and good with schedule, okay? Now, as we come down here, 
The problem becomes, now again, we're just looking at these, at this task, okay? And remember, we would then just add up these, okay? So if we wanted to do just two, uh, one and two, we would see we'd be at 4,000, 5,000, you know, we would still be at the, the negative thousand for these two, okay? This is just talking about this one task. And that's where that variance comes from, right? Is task two. So we're behind 0.67 and one. Now notice the scheduled index, okay? Now 2,000, 3,000, we're again over. We haven't completed these, okay? But again, we did those numbers, right? Where we had um, 6,000 in planned value divided by the 8,000, you know, to give us these values. Now, estimate of completion. So estimates the most likely total or final value based on our project's performance and any risks that should be considered. So <laughs> we can either revise the whole budget, you know, schedule and start over. Uh, we can use the project's current performance metrics to develop a more realistic picture. So again, if at that point we're 0.67, we can apply that throughout the project to figure out what the true actual cost, what the true earned value might be by just um, reversing the calculations, okay? So again, but also keep in mind, it doesn't mean that we can't get back on track. So, you know, just, just keep in mind that, that this may in fact not be quote unquote realistic. So here's the uh, EAC. So the cumulative actual cost is 8,000, okay? Plus the BAC minus the cumulative earned value divided by the cumulative CPI, that index that we got, okay? Tells us that this project is gonna end up at 53,333. And that's, that's off a great deal, right? So uh, EAC, so an atypical cumulative AC, okay, plus the BAC minus the cumulative uh, divided by both, it, divided by the SPI times the CPI index. So notice there was our CPI. Remember here we were spending we were getting 75 cents of value for every dollar spent. Here we're getting 60 cents for every dollar spent. So if we do an atypical variance, we can see it's upwards of 65,500 that will end up, you know, uh, on the project. Okay. So again, taking these numbers out, you know, doing that math, you know, we expected 40,000, you know, uh, minus the estimate of the variance, the VAC, right, which just takes into consideration the CPI only. And with just the CPI, we're going to be 13,333 uh, over, which would be a bad thing. And this becomes even worse, right? When we take into account the CPI and the SPI, we end up at 25,000. So finally, to complete performance index for the original BAC, to complete performance index, we take the BAC minus the EV divided by, again, the BAC minus the AC, okay? So the earned value, you know, minus the actual value. Here's the number, we're at 1.06, which means, you know, basically to finish the project, if we took this index and put it back into our values, we know that we're going to end up being over. So to complete the performance index for the EAC with the typical and atypical variances that we talked about, so we had that, you know, um, we had the 40,000 minus the six, so we're bringing this back. The 53 minus the 8,000 for 0.75. And then here for, oh, and here for the CPI, okay, or you know, if considered the effect of both the CPI and the SPI, then we use the calculation below. So again, one, we're just taking the effect of the CPI, 
The other were taking effect of the CPI and the SPI. Now with the CPI, we end up totaling that 0.75. With both, we total 0.59, which means the value is even worse if we take into account, okay? Now the fact is most likely somewhere between this, if we extrapolate out and nothing changes in the project, is gonna be the base result, okay? So this is a great chart uh, to look at and to, to spend some time with. So the budget at completion, the total planned budget, uh, it's an amount formula, it's a given, right? So it's 40,000. The planned value of 10,000, the actual cost as to where we are right now is eight, the earned value is six, and then the scheduled variance, how we found that. So let me be clear, you, you don't need to memorize these but if given some values, you should know how to calculate these. Now you would be able to use notes, obviously, to calculate this. So consequently, let's come down and look at those last numbers because I went through those kind of quick. So basically, if the current CPI continues, that's the key. The project will cost 53,333, okay? If we take the CPI and the SPI and the project continues, then the worst case scenario is that the project will be 65,500, uh, right? Budget at completion, 40,000. That's a huge, huge variance. Now, let's keep in mind <laughs> that even though these numbers seem really poor, we probably might even continue on with the project as long as we could show and as long as the stakeholders would accept that, there, that there's gonna be an increase, and I guarantee there's gonna be an increase in time as well, right? But if they can accept that, then we're gonna be uh, continuing the project, and it just means that the um, cost that we have to get back, you know, our total cost of ownership is gonna be reduced, or is gonna be increased, right? And then if there's revenue coming from this project, the time to recoup that is gonna be longer. But if the stakeholders accept that, then we would continue on with the project. So estimate to completion. So the project cost to complete the remaining work is ETC equals EAC minus AC. So 45,333, we've got that same number. Okay, and then with this 57,500, again, this is that difference between what we've already spent, essentially, okay? So again, spend a little time on these numbers as well. I tend to, you know, really simplify things. It, to me, depending on the project, now, if you're talking about a long, big project, then you definitely want to do this work, okay? So in terms of completion of planned value, okay, uh, just multiply the planned value of the activity, task, or work breakdown structure and component by its percentage of completion. So pretty simple. Earn value PV times percent complete. So if you notice here, okay, this is 100% complete. This is 100% complete. So our earned value is correct. Here, we're at 75%. So that's where a variance comes from what our planned value, from our earned value, okay. And if we have already started and completed, we come in here and figure this out. Our plan value is 65. Our earned value is 5,000. Take those, divide them. Clearly we see that we are, you know, not producing the value that we should based on the dollars being put into the, into the project, okay? So to finish this up, uh, you know, reviews, maybe formal, informal, can include various project stakeholders. They should always include stakeholders. We should be looking at these numbers and reviewing them at each milestone. So basically with a, you know, with a five task basic project like this, we would wanna get these numbers after each task and then accumulate them with subsequent task numbers to see where we're sitting. We're probably going to use a line chart to, uh, provide a graphical representation of you know what our present co actual cost is what our earned value is what our you know estimated value is the whole nine yards okay uh, status and progress reports again it's all about reporting this back 
And if the project goes sideways, okay, that actually can be okay. Let's, you know, we're, we're not just suddenly gonna shut down the project because it went sideways. It's okay if it went sideways. We just wanna make the stakeholders aware of what it is that happened and what's going on, okay? So, you know, information distribution, face-to-face, -face, using Teams, getting those reports out. You know, I cannot uh, suggest enough that no matter how a project is going, in a positive direction, in a neutral direction, in a negative direction, have those face-to-face -face meetings, okay? We're spending so much time now um, focusing on technology, focusing on teams, that we're missing a lot of the communication that can give us indications as to how people are doing, how the project's doing, uh, do we have that um, upper management support for the project, okay? So communication uh, and collaboration matrix. So, you know, same time, you know, different place, telephone, teleconference, video conference. So again, okay, you know, different time, electronic mail threaded. Now we see that this is where we're getting away from email. We're getting away from email here and we're going to things like Slack where the information is distributed and shared with more people, okay? And there's a historical value of it. I'm only sending out the communication once and then everybody can reply and everybody can see everyone's reply. It really becomes more efficient. Here, if we can't get together using Zoom, and hearing the voice and, and seeing the facial expressions, knowing how people are doing with the project is key. All right, we'll see you for the next set.